Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of The Power of Dhikr. In the previous episodes of The Power of Dhikr, we've been looking uh, overall at some of the principles and some of the rules and some of the things that we need to be aware of when we are remembering Allah Azza wa Jal, some of the, the virtues of remembering Allah, the importance of remembering Allah, how the prayer, how the Quran, how the names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal fits into our remembrance of Allah. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the practical side of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the practical side of dhikr. And to do this, we're actually going to, to, to look at a topic that is in between the two. It has some theoretical aspects to it and it has some practical aspects to it as well. And that is to look at those four words, those four phrases, which are from the most beloved of speech to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, and Allahu Akbar. We see from the virtue of these four phrases that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that they are the most beloved of speech to Allah. So Al-Imam Muslim narrates in his Sahih from the hadith of Samura, may Allah be pleased with him, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the most beloved of speech to Allah is four things. Four things. Doesn't matter which one of them you begin with. So they are all equal, doesn't matter whether you begin with one or the other, in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal, whichever one you begin with, it, it doesn't do you any harm. They are, subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. They are, subhanallah, and alhamdulillah, and la ilaha illallah, and allahu akbar. And these are the four words, the four phrases that we are going to be looking at, inshallah, over the next couple of episodes, inshallah ta'ala, and trying to understand their virtue and why they should form such a huge part of the dhikr and the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal that we do. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in another hadith that there are four words or four phrases that they are from the most beautiful of speech. Min al kalam, from the most pure and the most beautiful and the best of speech. And they are, it doesn't matter, they are from the Quran and it doesn't matter which of them you begin with. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that these four phrases are more beloved to him than everything in this world. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith of Abu Hurairah, which is narrated by Imam Muslim in his Sahih, for me to say Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, is more beloved to me than everything which the sun rises upon. Think of everything good in this earth. SubhanAllah, all of the wealth, all of the bounties, all of the things, all of the land, all of the, the power that people accumulate. And yet to the Prophet SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam, it was more beloved for him to say, SubhanAllah, Walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. In the hadith of Umhani, may Allah be pleased with her. She mentioned that she had become old. And she asked the Prophet ﷺ for something that she could do that would be easy for her regardless of her age. Now this is very important because we go through times of sickness, we go through times of health, we go through times of uh, becoming older, and we're not always able to do all of the things that we used to do. Perhaps we're not able to do all of the prayers that we used to do. The Prophet ﷺ said to her, Say subhanallah a hundred times. For this hundred times will be equal to a hundred slaves that you free from the children of Ismail. SubhanAllah. As though you had freed a hundred slaves from the children of Ismail. And say Alhamdulillah a hundred times. And this will be like a hundred horses that you send out uh, and you have uh, laden them. You know, they are full and they are carrying their full weight for the sake of Allah. SubhanAllah. Imagine who can give that amount of wealth. How many of us can give the wealth that is equivalent to a hundred laden horses? 
going out for the sake of Allah. It's not very. It's very very difficult for to imagine a person being able to afford that kind of wealth. Very few people, and yet all she had to do is to say Alhamdulillah only to say Alhamdulillah a uh, hundred times. He said, "Say Allahu Akbar a hundred times," because it will be like a hundred camels that are full and that are you know that are f- again fully laden that are c- that are you know sort of again going out and uh, given in in charity that are being uh, sacrificed in charity again m- how many of us can even sacrifice one or two camels to give out in charity but to sacrifice a hundred camels that is something which is again something which most people are unable to do and then he said and say la ilaha illallah a hundred times and uh, he said, uh, he said the, the, the narrator of the hadith said, I think that he said that it will fill that which is between the heavens and the earth. And nobody will be able to do an action on that day except that he does the same thing that you did. In other words, nobody will be able to do anything better unless he does the same that you did. There are so many benefits of this hadith. But I do want to focus on something and I do want to, to sort of give a warning out and just to explain to people very briefly. That this, the numbers mentioned in this hadith are authentic, a hundred times. But many people invent numbers that are not authentic. So they say, say this 700 times, say this 800 times, say this 1001 times. This is not allowed in Islam because as we mentioned at the beginning of our discussion of dhikr, at the very first episode or during the very first episode, we said that your dhikr will only be accepted if it's in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. So whenever you give a specific number for your dhikr, like 100 or 33 or whatever it may be, or 10 or whatever it may be, make sure that that number has a basis in the sunnah. So this has a basis in the sunnah. Now I look at what he offered her for simply saying those few words. Subhanallah a hundred times. Alhamdulillah a hundred times, La ilaha illallah a hundred times, Allahu Akbar a hundred times. To fill that which is between the heavens and the earth, a hundred camels that are sacrificed, a hundred horses that go out, a hundred slaves that are freed, for simply saying these few words. That is such a huge reward for a deed which is really very, very easy for everyone to do regardless of their age. From the virtues of these words is that they forgive the sins. They are they wipe out the sins. And this is authentically narrated in a hadith of the Prophet wasallam that there is no person on the earth who says La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Wala Hawla Wala Quwata illa billah, except that all of his sins will be forgiven even if they are more than the form of the sea. Allahu Akbar. Even if they are more than the form of the sea. He just says, La ilaha illallah. And then he says his, the, the other words. He says, Allahu Akbar. And he says, Subhanallah. And he says, Alhamdulillah. And he says, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. And every single sin of his is forgiven. Of course, with the major sins, we repeat again, as we've mentioned several times already, that the major sins are only forgiven with tawbah. So this must be accompanied by repentance you must repent for the major sins that you have done. Feel sorry for them. Intend not to do them again. Stop doing them at the time. Go, uh, make up any faults that you've done towards other people. And along with that repentance, when you say these words, all of your sins will be forgiven, even if they are like the form of the sea. And the form of the sea meaning in great, such great, great, great uh, number, such huge, such a huge uh, amount. Um, these uh, these words that we say. Subhanallah, they have so many, so many virtues in the hadith and they are so, so easy to say. Nobody will be able to do an action which is better than them. There is nobody nobody who is able, as is authentically narrated in the hadith, nobody will be able to do anything better than this unless they do the same as what you did. From the virtues of these actions is that they make up for the what the poor are unable to do. And we've already mentioned this hadith, the hadith uh, in which they talk about the poor who came to the Prophet ﷺ and they said to him that we aren't able to be able to, to give what, what the rich can give. And the Prophet ﷺ instructed them to make up for the fact that they were not able to do it by saying these words. So really what we understand by these words is that we understand that these words are a way for us 
to reach a level that we would not normally be able to reach. They're a way for us to come close to Allah in a way that maybe our circumstances don't allow us to do. And that's from the, from the blessings and from the, the, the justice of Islam, is that even if you haven't been given wealth, even if you haven't been given health, even if you haven't been given youth, even if you haven't been given energy, whatever it is you don't have, you can still make up for those things by saying these simple words. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, and then uh, fifth uh, is also included in some of the narrations, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. So we'll look at some more of the virtues. Uh, from the virtues uh, is that they, these words save a person or are a shield of a person uh, in the hellfire, against the hellfire. So they shield you from the hellfire. And the Prophet wasallam said in an authentic hadith, take yourselves a shield. They said, O Messenger of Allah, that, uh, that uh, you know, subhanAllah, how, you know, how do we do this? They asked the Prophet wasallam, how do you do this? Uh, what enemy are we taking a shield from? Where is our enemy going to come from? The Prophet wasallam said, no, rather take a shield from the hellfire. By saying, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. For these things will come on the day of judgment, and Subhanallah, these things on the day of judgment are going to shield you from the hellfire, and the Prophet ﷺ said about them, they are al baqiyatu salihat They are those good deeds which remain, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says are better in the sight of your Lord than all of the wealth that the people amass. So this is another virtue that they will protect a person from the hellfire and save a person from the hellfire. So there are many, many virtues of these four words and we haven't been able to mention all of them. For example, from the virtues of them is that every single one of them is a sadaqah because the Prophet wasallam said that every statement of SubhanAllah is sadaqah and every statement of Allahu Akbar is sadaqah and every statement of La ilaha illallah is sadaqah and so on and so forth. There are so many of the virtues of these words. Insha'Allah Ta'ala, in the coming episodes, we're going to look at what these words actually mean. And we're going to look at how we understand them. And because by understanding them, we're going to ideally make our dhikr better and more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's coming up in the next episode, inshallah. So please do join us then. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Make me alive again. Give me a fresh start. So change my heart, please. Wash the filth away Don't leave me drowning here Alone and astray Don't leave me drowning here Alone and astray